I'll do an intro later. 44? <laughs> sure, we're going to go with 44. We're on episode 44. <laughs> we don't even know. It's been, a, it's been a long ass weekend, you guys. And we are wrapping up uh, NPC Universe. So we thought we would do something a little bit different today. We're even, like, I can see your hotel out my hotel room right now. <laughs> we're even we're in the same city. But Jordan's over there and we're over here. So welcome we're to the We're not done yet. <laughs> you guys are still going that's the whole thing the heating and things like that too there's girls competing in orlando so jordan is still doing check-ins right now but we have a special guest as you can see we've got sarah over here so sarah um is one of jordan's clients oh yeah before we do this like comment subscribe do that part too um <laughs> sarah <laughs> sarah is one of jordan's clients is what jordan your... She is a new IFBB pro. Yeah, there you go. And your first one as a, as a coach, right? She is. Yes, yeah, Sarah is my very first one as a coach. That's freaking awesome. So how did that, how did, for you, Jordan, how did that feel? Um, yeah, I was pretty emotional all day. Um, so as soon as she was in a class of seven and she was dead center and prejudging. So we, we fearly knew unless something crazy went. Um, and I was crying as soon as she walked off stage. So oh, I, know. I was there. Um, I saw you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> super, super proud of her. You know, um, I was wondering who the first one would be. I was hoping it was going to be someone, you know, special to me. It is Sarah, Sarah, um, Sarah and I have been friends for a really long time. We, you know, the moment we met, we were friends and Sarah has seen me grow as a coach for many years from the beginning. And, Somehow she was crazy enough to hire me once and she said, I trust you. I trust you with everything. And we did a really long improvement season together and she has put in a ton of work that not a lot of people have seen and um, took every piece of advice and has made so many improvements to be here. Um, so in addition to her being such a great friend and person, uh, getting emotional again, she she just, she earned it. She earned every bit of it. So I'm, just, I'm it's a moment I'm never gonna forget. Well, I thought what it was person I'm never gonna Yeah, forget. it was pretty cool because I've actually known Sarah myself from for, for a few years. Yeah. Met at Clash and think it was Clash, right? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was cool to see this happen for you guys too, because you know clearly she was also um, one of the overall winners at DC Pro Am too. So I got to I got to be the comment commentator for your that was your last yes your see two weeks ago yeah two see that's i'm gonna pull yeah. my, my yeah. to make sure we can hear you yeah. too so you know that's the thing like i try to tell people you never know when your last npc show actually is right did right. you have any idea going into to dc pro-am that that would be the last time you'd be really stepping on stage in the, as an amateur oh absolutely not <laughs> you know you never you never put the cart before the horse, right? right? And I said that yesterday. Okay, we're not going to jinx it. Doesn't matter where I'm sitting. I don't want to put the cart before the horse. Yep. So, no, absolutely not. I yeah. don't think so. But. So, what did you do differently? What did you guys, both of you, what did you guys do differently between DC and here? Because I actually noticed a big difference in her physique. So, brought her in really full. So, she checked in with me the day after DC, um, after getting a good meal in and her glute, she looked, she looked better than Saturday. Her glutes were massive. Um, and waistline was super tight after, you know, a good amount of food. So I said to her, like, this is what we need to bring, you know, with basically the same exact look. So she, she you kind of cruise, like we didn't have to push anymore. Her body was responding really, her body's very healthy right now. So I was telling Drew and her in the room yesterday, like anything that I, you know, if I put this on the plan and I wanted X result, her body responded that exact same way. So she's very, very healthy right now and responding very well. Um, so my goal was to bring her in in the same conditioning with much more fullness. And I think mm -hmm. that we achieved that and, and more, honestly, her glam was perfect yesterday from LeBeau suit was perfect. I mean, it all just came together so well. Um, mm -hmm. She came in, she checked in with me yesterday morning, fasted through the internet before I saw her in person. And I looked at Drew and I said, if it's not today, like, I don't, I don't know how much better I can bring her in. Like this, yeah. this is it. Um, so yeah, it was really, it was really easy, you know, from DC. I just better more. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, too, is like, you know, I try to get my girls to grind before their first um, warm up show because I want them to be lean enough that then it's so easy for them if we continue going, you know, we're feeding mm -hmm. into shows, we're only depleting a little bit after the show. Um, and that makes it so much easier for them to be able to stay healthy and continue, you know, to yeah. just keep reversing into those shows from, you know, here on out. Awesome. So I, her feedback was just to have more shape into her front pose. So what did you guys do in order to create that? Oh, we worked it out. <laughs> <laughs> we 
more <laughs> twist, more twist, more, 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 more. <laughs> yeah, constantly yeah. just posing, changing it up, everything. So yeah, it was a, a yeah. lot of work. Still working on it. Going to continue to work on it. Um, yeah. yeah. From the moment I left DC, my gears were going, and like I would just randomly text her, like, "Hey, I want to try this." Yeah. Send me a video. Yeah. She put her suit on, sent me a video. And then a couple hours, hey, try this. Like, you know, and that's the thing. Like, I couldn't sleep last night. You know, the show's over. But now I'm just thinking about all the girls that were on stage yesterday and, like, what I want next and what the best move is. And, you know, and it, it's it's exciting, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Sarah won a pro card yesterday. I had five other girls that didn't, you know. So, right. it's, you know, of course, yeah. you know, I'm celebrating Sarah. But then I'm also, like, damn, you know, I'm, I'm my, my heart hurts for the five that didn't, right? So it's like, now what's next? And what am I going to do? And where can I be better? And Sarah saw that, you know, after DC, I knew she was close. I had a very good feeling this year was going to be her year. I have never told her that. I would never say that to a client until it actually yeah. happens. But I, you know, I knew she had made improvements and this was going to be a great package. So I was texting her constantly like, hey, try this, hey, try this. And she would just do it. And then we finally found the, found the shape. And I think that we brought a really, really good shape in that front pose. Her feedback um, was, you know, long term, she needs more glutes, which we already knew that. So and I know that when we grow, you know, the glute density, she's not going to she's going to have that shape in the front pose without even trying that right. hard. So long term, that's what we're going to work on and continuing to keep the waist nice and tight. She has done a ton of work on her uh, waist co core control. Um, we could be better. But when I met Sarah, she had no, no core core control. Mm -hmm. She couldn't even draw right. her stomach in. Um, and she has done a ton of work to make sure that she can. Um, and then it's interesting because the other athletes that were on our team yesterday, that's their feedback. You know, so Sarah was able to say like, that was me. I've had that feedback. I promise you, I did this, I did this, I did this and it works, you know? So it's good for them to have that perspective as well to know that, you know, this is an issue, but it is fixable as long as you yep. do the exercises. And, you know, we have really good people in our corner that has helped her. That is a huge thing too. I mean, across the board, not just in them as well, just the core control. Or you hear it all the time, core control, core yes. control, core control. Don't lose your stomach, do your vacuums, be tight, all those kinds of things. People don't realize. Um, not right now, thanks. That's housekeeping. <laughs> <laughs> Random housekeeping. Uh, no, no, we're good. <laughs> so, I lost my train of thought. Oh, oh, that's what I was going to say. So with that, this is actually something you both could kind of touch on managing, like you said, managing the emotions, because obviously it's an exciting time for the two of you winning the pro card and everything too, but you've got clients that didn't go pro. You've got friends here that didn't go pro. So how do you manage that? How do you manage decided, but you don't want to come across as insensitive at the same time? Gosh, you know, I think when you start to put other people first instead of yourself, it just comes naturally. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I always care about my teammates and how they're feeling in the moment. And last night I went to dinner with a couple of them and they said, congratulations, Sarah, cheers. And we're all cheer, you know, mm -hmm. and I said, no, it's about all of us, yes. the hard work that we all put in to be here. So yeah, it's just not about me and what happened with me yesterday. It's about, all of us were a team. Yeah. So what about you, Jordan? What did you do? Yeah, we uh, we got back to the hotel room last night and Drew was like, so which one are you feeling the most? Are you feeling the high of, you know, turning someone pro? Or are you feeling, you know, the heartbreak of the other five? And it's tough. You know, you go in waves. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I was sitting up last night, finally having a second. I would like, you know, internally be like, oh my God, this is so great. I'm so excited for Sarah, for me, you know, and, and then the next one I'm thinking about, you know, the athlete that you know, didn't get it and, yeah. you know, how they're feeling right now and texting them and making sure they're okay, you know, and it is, it's, it's about managing both. And my, I, I say this all the time on the podcast, like we are a team, you know, me and Sarah are a team. She wins mm -hmm. yesterday. I win, you know, and my other athletes that were on the, you know, we're a team and we lost, you know, and one of my girls was holding center until the very last second and then got moved out and got third place. I missed it by one, one point. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so it's, it's difficult. It's really difficult to manage, you know, and I'm all kinds of emotions, but you just do the best you can, you know, and the girls are in really good spirits. You know, most of them have done this before, you know, it's, you're going to win or lose a lot more than you win in this sport. And, you know, when it's your day, it's your day. And yesterday yeah. was Sarah's day. And for the rest of them, they're going to continue to work until it's their day. And it will be as long as we keep, you know, continuing progressing and getting the feedback. Yep. And that's, I think that's the hardest part like you said it's i think you want to you want to feel all of the emotions the good the good ones and the bad 
because again, like you said, it kept you up last night. Cause you're like, okay, what do we do next? You know, what, what do we do to fix these things and all that kind of stuff? So I, I, I totally understand that it's hard because you want, again, you don't want to diminish the moment for you. You know, that's, that's a big moment. That's a huge moment. You don't ever get that. that that's a big moment, but at the same time, got to be sensitive. So it's, it's like you said, you win as a team, you lose as a team. So it's a difficult, I think that's something people don't understand too, <clears throat> being in the athlete's shoes or the coach's shoes in those moments, because you do have to be very sensitive to the people around you. You really do. And it's, it's, it's hard because again, it's like, it's one of those things where you really like you've worked for years for this you know what i mean like it's not like it just it's like oh this was kind of cool no 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 you've been working for years for this so you want to experience that you know i can tell you like i don't know about you but the the i won my pro card at this show 11 years ago and i can still remember how like thick the air was when i walked off stage and went into the lobby and like i was in like a daze like i can feel that i can remember that like when i walk through there was there any moment yesterday where you just won't ever forget that feeling or what it felt like? Oh my gosh. Okay. So right after I walked off stage, I got goosebumps just all over my body walking behind the screen. I just put my head down and I remember just feeling the biggest smile on my face yeah. with goosebumps all over me and just like, ah, uh, just yeah. electric. Yeah. And that's something yeah. that like, again, that feeling like you'll, it'll never go away. You right. know I mean, like you, anytime you think like that's just that, that thing there that sticks in your mind. Yeah. What about you? Like when you were sitting there in the audience and saw her walk off in the center spot, what, what was, what was the, I mean, obviously you started crying, <laughs> <laughs> but what was it that you felt? You know what I mean? Um, I was actually really annoyed um, because Drew got his <laughs> first pro card here um, last year at universe for an athlete. And um, this will be mine. And yeah. he was nowhere to be found. And oh. I was sitting next to him when he got his first one. I remember it was like a moment for us. I was so proud of him. And we got, and I was texting him and I was like, Sarah's on stage any second. Like it's happening any second. And he was stuck backstage oiling athletes and oh. he didn't have his phone. So I was sitting by myself. <laughs> I wasn't even sitting like with our team or anything, but Sarah made the night. She didn't even know she made my night, but she didn't, she doesn't have anyone here this weekend. So it was just me and her. And she was eyes locked on me in the audience and pointed right at me. And it was like this moment, like in that yeah. moment, it was just the two of us there. And it was our silent celebration together. And I needed that more than she knew because I was sitting by myself and I wanted you to be there to celebrate with me. <laughs> and he wasn't. And I was, I knew that was going to happen. And she just took that second. And like I said, it was like, all the air got sucked out of the room and it was just her and I in that moment and we locked eyes and it was our, our celebration together. And it was, it was really, really, really special. Really special. It's like that she, moment. She, she in, means so much to me. It's that moment in those romantic comedies where like you hear the birds singing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it feels like, it feels like, ta like time, time and stops. it was seconds, you mm -hmm. know? And um, like I said, like Sarah just means so much to me. She's a great person. She has a great family behind her. And you know, it's, it was, it's, it's just, it was perfect for not a perfect situation for me, yeah. like not having Drew right there, just because I wanted him to be there to celebrate. And he loves Sarah so much too. She's family to us. So, yeah. but it was, it was awesome. It was, it ended up being perfect. But well, he was right there whenever I walked out too. Yes. With his, with his phone. phone. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's got really good photos of her coming out from the moment she just talked about from right okay. that backstage. And okay. she like, she had yes. just the, the immediate emotion <laughs> pictures. Yeah. It was perfect. That's awesome. Well, you know, that's, I say that all the time. It was perfectly imperfect. Like you, you, you always, again, you kind of envision what that moment's going to be and it's never the, what you envision it to be, mm -hmm. but it always ends up being something special. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. yeah, that's awesome. So um, I don't know if you guys have done this yet, but have you planned out what the next step is or have you had the conversation yet? Are you going to wait, have a burger or we're in Jersey. So pizza. She's, she's, pizza she was allowed to have fun last night. I think yeah, the TJ so. girls, you guys went out last night for dinner and drinks. Yes. And then she's gotten into the eating day to day. And then I told her to, you know, take 24 to 48 hours to think about it. Um, Sarah has a, um, she's married and she has a mm -hmm. wonderful husband, Paul, and he travels for work a lot. And he was unable to be here for his pro, for her pro card win. So we talked about maybe getting on stage again and she wants Paul to yeah. be there for the next yeah. one. And I, I want him to be there too. I totally love and respect that. So I was like, just go enjoy the next couple of days and let me know. I don't know if she's had any thoughts and I haven't seen her since late last night, I but <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about it and just, just not sure. I want to hit the stage and do what 
you guys talked about on one of your podcasts <laughs> <laughs> where it's get the feedback yeah. and then work from there or do I want to push hard and build some glutes and get my core right and then come out more competitive. Yeah. So it, it's, you know, it's yeah. like, what do we do? Yeah. But Jordan and I'll figure it out. Yeah. And like you said, I mean, take the time to figure it out. You don't have to know right now. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and also like enjoy the moment. Like we were just talking about before, like enjoy the win. I think some people forget to do yeah. that. They forget to actually like enjoy the fact you just won your pro card. You know, you don't have to go to stage right away if you don't want to, you know, enjoy that, sit in that moment, you know, and really enjoy the, the fruits of your labor more than anything else. Yeah. Yeah, she's yeah. been prepping for a while. She's been prepping since the first of this year, you know, and her feedback was, you know, get some more core control, which we can do and build her glutes, you know. Yeah. So, you know, there's value in her taking time off now, you know, and then we come out like strong for a, a pro debut. Um, there's also value in just getting up there and getting that feedback against the other masters pro athletes. Um, I will say that, you know, Tyler and Etela are head judging this weekend and her feedback was pretty specific, you know, so mm -hmm. we really can't get better feedback from them from the two of them. So we can't go wrong either way. You know, if we do the pro debut, we know we're going there for feedback and to have fun. And, you know, just Sarah mm -hmm. made a comment last night and I was like, yeah, welcome to the pro league. You know, you know, you go from here and then DC and we're right back down to the bottom, you know, so it's there's value in, in both. And really, you right. know, I just had an athlete in my room right before this two seconds ago from yesterday, you know, we're coming up with the next steps and what, what it looks like. And she's also deciding, you know, the one that almost got a pro card yesterday, she's like, do I just shut it down now, come out next year and know that it's going to be handed to me? Or do I try to do every national show? And, you know, Sean and I have talked about this on the podcast. Yeah. Two girls went pro yesterday. She was third. If she goes to the next national right. show, we obviously can't guarantee anything, but she should be one of the next ones to go. Right. So, just, yep. Right. So it's hard. It's really, really hard. You know, it just really depends on the athlete where they're at mentally, um, how they're feeling, how their body's responding, and everybody's going to make the best choice that works for them. I support them no matter what. You know, mm -hmm. my, my job is is to make sure that everybody's happy and healthy and we're working towards those goals, whether we're doing it now or we need to take a little bit more time. Yeah. Awesome. Well, what we're going to do today for those of you listening is we've got a few more girls that have competed this past weekend. They're going to come in and we're going to go through the same interview process, but we wanted to get Jordan on because she's still working on her clients <laughs> over here. <laughs> so we're like, obviously we're like, okay, let's get her in. So at least get this one done and everything. My closing thoughts as we move on to the next girl that'll, that'll come in next. I just want to say I'm so thankful to have her mm -hmm. in my life. I mean, I just love her. She's so on top of it, so detailed, and I couldn't have done it without her. I just love you. <laughs> love you too. Congratulations. I'm really proud of you. Thanks. Over here, like virtual hug, virtual I hug. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, got to get through today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you're are you uh, heading home tomorrow or are you heading home today? I am heading home tomorrow. It'll be my first time home in 13 days. Yeah. <laughs> get to sleep in my own bed tomorrow. One. Yes. It's been a long one. Yeah. And on stage today too. So he's, is he at pre-judging right now? Yeah, we right had now? two guys on stage today. Yep. Okay. All right. Yeah. Anything you'd like to say to close out? No. I'm just, <laughs> you're like, I'm no, just, I'm not, you're like, my head's on the next girl that's got to get on stage. <laughs> I think we, no, I think we said everything yeah. and, and thank you guys for dealing with my schedule and me and everything else. Um, no, I'm just, um, it's been a great weekend. It's been an awesome, awesome weekend for Fit Body Fusion. I think we got nine pro cards in Something total like that, yeah. yesterday. Was, yeah. I think it was one, was it one overall? Koa. Yeah, Koa. Koa. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I'm just beauty. so proud of all those girls. You know, it's yeah. even if they're not on, you know, my team, mm -hmm. we are still team fit body fusion. And, you know, we're right. back there and Sarah saw them. I don't care what athlete you are, you know, I'm glazing you, helping you with your tan, helping with your posing. Like I learned to love every single one of these girls on a team. Yeah. So like Koa, I saw her at her warm up show in mm -hmm. DC and, you know, yep. all just all those women back there, you know, it's just, it's really cool. You know, the more I do this and the more shows I go to with this team, I continue to be amazed at, you know, the love and the support backstage, you know, Sean, it was great having you there this week mm -hmm. with all your girls and posing and, you know, seeing and sitting next to you, you know, and prejudging, like we're just, the collaboration is just unmatched and it really does make a difference when we're all on site together, helping each other out. Like, I don't 100%. know how I could have gone through this weekend without everyone that was here. So yeah, yeah, just yep. having fun, having a good, awesome. good time.
Well, I, I actually had an overall myself for Congrats. fitness. Yes, for fitness. fitness. <laughs> so yeah. po posing in suit, I wasn't her coach. But the cool part about that is actually her coach is the husband to one of my other Pro Performer Promise winners, Andrea, too. So it's like a big family thing. <laughs> so, um, wow. so yeah, so I'm actually going to see if I can get her in to get a little interview with her as well. She's still here. So, um, cool. yeah, she won, the, she won the fitness overall. It was her second show ever, and she won the fitness She's overall. She's so stinky. She is. Oh my God. A uh, back tux yeah. on the lawn. Yeah. Her freaking, her confidence, like. Go ahead and go, you do that now. <laughs> yeah, right? There you go. <laughs> yeah, no, she she was just, she was just amazing. And it's like, when I started posing with her, she felt like she, she said, she told me she felt like she didn't know what she was doing. I was like, are you kidding? You freaking know what you're doing? I was like, I just got to tweak things wow. for you. You got to, you look ridiculous. She's going to, she's going to, she's going to do some damage on the pro stage for sure. For sure. And she's got wow. a really wow. powerful routine round. Really powerful. Oh, congrats. So, she looked amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah. let's get her in here. But Jordan, we're going to let you go back to your thing. Sarah, we're going to let you enjoy your pro win. And then we're going to get the next girl on here. So you stay tuned for the next one. Bye, guys. Bye. Perfect. Bye. All right, guys. We're back with another new IFBB Pro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're because you only did how many NPCs? Well, two technically. Two technically with this one, right? So, first of all, introduce yourself. My name's Tatiana. Come a little closer to so make sure we can get the get the mic here. So go ahead for. Do I take my first time lesson? It's up to you. Okay, my name's Tatiana. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody's gonna know your name. Everybody's gonna know your name, right? Right, because you're gonna rock the new IV. So, so what did you do this weekend? What did you do? Um, like for the show or just in general? Yeah, just tell, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Like, what was your division? What did you do? Um, I did fitness. Yeah. I, I really just kind of came here with no intentions in general because this was only my second one. Yeah. Um, going back, thinking from the first one, it was I only competed against myself, so it was a lot different yeah. this time. Like yeah. actually having to go up there and do like uh, quarter turns and like, mm -hmm. that was weird. That was stressful, um, but it was fun. It, mm -hmm. I actually felt like conscious on stage because last time it just was like, I'm the only one out there, so I doubt. Yeah, 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 yeah. So she won the overall in fitness. So she is your newest fitness IAVB pro. Um, and we started working together just a few weeks ago, really. So we just started working on your posing and everything like that. And, and you have an incredible shape, like you Thank really you. do. So so what made you just fitness versus like figure or something like that instead? Um, it actually wasn't like my choice. Okay. Um, so Andrea Glass at AG Fit Mom, um, <laughs> she, her, her brother, it used to be my cheer coach. Okay. Down in, in um, Southern California, he moved to Bakersfield with his wife and I really refused to go to any other program around. So okay. At 16, I picked up all my stuff and I left and I went to Bakersfield to follow them to just like cheer. And they have a daughter now, um, not Andrea, but Jason, that's his, or that's his okay. brother. Damn. It's okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Cut. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. <laughs> but, uh, so they had a daughter. She had her um, dance recital. And so we ended up going to like lunch with them and they were like, you should do it. And I was like, yeah. And sure. then they like actually sent me everything and I was like, oh. And so I did it for the first show, which was uh Ben Weeder. And then the second time I just or this time I was just like, We're we're still doing it. Like here's yeah. the thing, like same thing though, but he was just like, This is the show that we're doing, these are all the things that you're gonna do. Here you go. And I was like, Okay. So did he do your routine for you? Is he who choreographed it or yeah, did. Andrea did. Okay, awesome. Andrea is one of my pro performer promise winners. She made it to the Olympia in fitness last year. Um, to, oh, not this past year, but the year before that. And you are now a pro performer promise winner too. Yeah. So mm -hmm. for those that don't know, if you win your pro card while you're wearing one of my suits, you end up getting sponsored for the remainder of your career. She was wearing one of my suits when she won her pro card. So therefore she is now sponsored. So we're keeping it in the family. Yeah, really <laughs> Cause your coach is her husband as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Both so them. yeah, At go ahead. Benny by the grand. There you go. Say it again yeah. so they can hear it. At Benny by the gram. Perfect. There you go. It's literally a family affair right there. <laughs> so when it came to, you know, diet and things like that for this show, I think a lot of people ha don't understand the criteria and how it works for, for fitness. 
So for fitness, they have a physique round and they have a routine round. The physique round is one third of your score and the, phys- uh, the routine round is two thirds of your score. So for the physique round, you guys have the same criteria basically as figure. Mm-hmm. So when it came to the physique round, what do you feel like you did well? What do you feel like you need to improve upon in order to do well in the fit in the, in the pro league? Um, it's really just like my eating. My, I can say I did a lot better during this prep, but there is also times where I slipped up a little bit more than I should have Mm -hmm. because I was always comparing myself to my last prep. And I was like, well, I didn't do this my last Mm -hmm. prep or I didn't, I did this and all those things. So I think this time will be a lot better though, but also getting used to it. And like my body likes eating like that, Mm -hmm. but then I'm also like working all day. So like it helps me out when I just have to like I have Stick like to this, to this, and this, and this, and it just makes my life a lot easier. Yeah. Because, you know, when uh, when I look at you as far as feedback, did you go get feedback for your for your physique round, or did you? I did not. No? I showed it to you. I'll give you feedback now if you want it. I do. Okay. Shape is great. I don't think you really need to do much to improve your shape, to be perfectly honest with you. I think it's just conditioning. I can agree with that. Yeah. I really think it's just conditioning. Um, you have great control over your muscle. And what I mean by that is, as a posing coach, when I'm trying, to get you to do something you just automatically you just want to tell you to open up bigger you do it you know for a lot of girls when i try to tell them what to do they can't physically do it yeah right which i think because you're fitness and because you do the routines and because you have to be so bendy all the time (laughs) i think that's actually very helpful yeah you know i think i think you're probably pretty mobile with the, you know you've got the cheer background what their kind of back do you have any gymnastics or anything like that too or just cheer just cheer i cheered for 10 10 years of my life. Okay. Good. Yeah. Well, that's a good question too. Do you mind telling, how old are you? 22. See, youngin. Yeah. You got, you got a long career ahead of you. I do. <laughs> yeah, I, I was the youngest in my division, expected in a sense. Mm-hmm. And it's like crazy to like go back there and they're like, I'm in my 40s. And I'm like, and you're doing the thing. Like it's, it's going good. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Isn't that crazy though? Like they're still being very competitive when they're in their 40s. Some yes. of our, some of our top fitness Olympians are in their 40s. So you could legitimately have a 20 year career in this division, in the yeah, sport. Which is crazy. Yeah. But I also felt like, I mean, yes, I'll always have like a normal job, but of like, course. Yeah. I always felt that I wasn't meant to do something normal. Of course. And, you know, this not is not normal. Even, yeah. I was like, not <laughs> this, this is not normal. <laughs> but for anybody that's listening, we know we are not normal. We know that very, very well. Uh, but it gives you something to, again, be active with, like, especially being in cheer. I'm sure you did that in high school and college and things like that. When you get out of that, what do you do? You know? Yeah. Well, I actually only did like a program cheer. So okay. like, like an outside, um, I didn't do, well, I did high school cheer for one year, but it was not it. And then that's also when I like just didn't have Jason and Ashley there in Southern California. And so it was like, I mean, I want to fill my time, but you want to be good at what you do. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I, and it's not even that they sucked as a team. It was me and like the level that I was already at in cheerleading mm-hmm. compared to like the high school cheerleading because not I already knew how to do. So. so in other words, you are somebody who doesn't settle. Like you just, you want to push yourself harder and harder and harder. I do. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, it, yeah. Yeah. When I like, I, there, I've never had like a, I feel like I, I, can do this but i always Mm -hmm. which is really cool and like as i've gotten older it's became it's like grown so Mm -hmm. that's really cool to watch and see like as my own self (laughs) right well that's you know the fact that you can look back to at your first show and say you know like i did this different i did that different that well you know so the the good thing is when you make mistakes and stuff like that that means that when you go forward you know not to do that again yeah right so you know going forward from here have you had the conversation with your coach yet as far as what you're doing do you know what you're doing next or well i thought he was gonna pick for me he was like but it's up to you so yeah. i don't know think about mm-hmm. i have some more body to build so mm-hmm. we'll just I don't know. I guess it'll just decide from that. I think I want to do one next year. Yeah. But like I said, I'm really not too sure. So, okay. We'll see. Do you feel like, as again, with the conditioning aspect of it too, like, do you feel feel like you're done with diet? I feel like you could continue to push. I'll, I'll probably, I mean, I got Hawaii in five weeks. So I oh, you're going to say. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You've got to stay in line for the vacation, right? Yeah. But either way, like even after, I think I'll continue it though because, like I said, my body likes eating that way. Like yeah. when I've eaten like the little few things that I've had, like the pizza and stuff like that. Like my body, I wake up and I feel like I've been hit by a post. Of course. So I'm like, I don't really like this feeling. I don't really like feeling bloated. Yeah. And all that good stuff. Yeah. Well, that and that affects how you actually perform too, especially with you know, with, again, going back to the the routines and stuff. You have to be able to be nimble. Yeah. And you can't do that if you're inflamed. No. <laughs> it hurts. There's, a, there's no doing jumps when your stomach is sloshing around. <laughs> oh, that happened to me before when I was younger. Automatically threw up. I yeah. Like, I can't do this. Yeah. Well, one thing I was really impressed with, um, you know, with your routines, I was there to watch it and everything too. It's just the, the front. Yeah. <laughs> I was I mean, right. I I, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I always get, I always get as close to the judges as I can in the front. I'm like, all right, right there. I'm going right there. Um, but yeah, one of the things that I noticed is that you have a lot of power in your routine. Do you attribute that to um, to the muscle mass that you carry? Because you do, in comparison to a lot of the girls that were up there this weekend, you carried a lot more muscle, a lot more physical muscle. Um, I'm gonna be. I don't really know. Yeah. Because like that's just. That was like a normal cheerleading routine for me. Yeah. Like if you would have just added in maybe like 40 more seconds, like that's a normal cheer team routine yeah. for me. Yeah. So that's exactly, I always, always, I'm always curious about that. Say there were girls on stage that were more conditioned than you, mm -hmm. but I know that when you get to that point, it's harder to have that kind of power in your routine because you just don't have the, you just don't have the stamina yeah. anymore, you know? So it's like, I would almost van go to the side of being less conditioned because it's more than the physique round. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I would stay on the side of I've got more strength, I've got more energy, I've got more power because that counts more. Yeah, I've just got to build more like strength for like different different skills. Yeah. Yeah. Holds and things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of girls in this, but at least the pro division where they're doing some crazy things. And I'm yes. Like, Man, gotta, gotta get on. That's one thing I can see definitely just like being able to hold. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And that, that's hard, man. People don't realize. The one arm thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's that takes and for those who need to because it's ridiculous. It's my favorite division to watch. I always watch fitness because it, the, the routines are just crazy. Yeah. They're, they really they're fun though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're really, they're a lot of fun. And it's just, again, when you see girls that have the physique and they have the power behind it, it's just, it's just next level. Yeah. It's just next level. It really is. So, um, so we shouted out your coaches. We talked about what we're going to do next. We talked about your whole history in the sport. Um, so what are you planning on doing? Like when you go home from here, like obviously we're, you're going to discuss and figure out what, what um, show you're going to go into, but are you going to plan like a new routine now? Or what are you yeah. going to do? Yeah. I gotta move, like, yeah. I don't know exactly what it is. But yeah. It's going to be some sort of tribute to California. Though. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Okay. I nice. I might be lying to you right now. But <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> At least that's the plan right yeah. now. Well, I, you know, one thing is I always tell girls when they get off stage after they've won their pro card, you know, it's like give yourself a couple of days to let yeah. them soak in and figure out like, okay, this is where I am. This is how I actually feel. And you're not riding on emotions. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because then you got you have the opportunity to come at it from a rational standpoint and realize, okay, these are the places where I, I want to do this. I want to do that. Yeah. Um, so last thing is your first show was Ben Weeder. You had no comment competition you went into this decent competition at this show there's actually quite a few fitness girls at this show um so did it feel any different as far as nervousness was concerned yes but that nothing to do with like having competitors okay um one thing about me for like, for like the last thing cheer um i would just like completely like black out on stage and like i could not like control like i my body pretty much was like an autopilot like the entire time okay and i felt the same at ben weeder like that i just completely blacked out like i walked off stage and i was like i don't know what i did like i just you know and same thing when i was doing like the actual posing and all that <laughs> good stuff and yeah the, like, physique round. Um, but this time, like, I actually felt like I was, like, conscious on stage, which was, like, really cool because I haven't felt that in, like, a really long time. So I was able to, like, control what was going on. Yeah. And, like, just be able to do all the things that I actually feel like I need to do. And get out. That's awesome. That's great. So we made you a suit. Purple. 
Mm -hmm. What's the significance behind purple for you? I just like purple. You just like purple? Yeah, my my eighth grade room, all purple. <laughs> all like my phone well, was a purple one. It's the color of royalty. I just yeah, it got you the crown. It, it got you the crown this it's weekend. Cool. So it's so funny because we always find something for each girl that's like their like calling card or whatever it may mm -hmm. be. So I guess purple is gonna have to be yours at this point. I feel like it. I yeah. mean. I yeah. Like <laughs> well, and that's a big part of it too. Like we always talk about this is like, okay, there's certain colors that look great on people, but if you don't feel great in it, it's totally different. If you feel great in it, that confidence is going to come through. Yeah. Yeah. So have you got any like awesome shots from the weekend yet that you're like, oh my God, that's going to be blown up into a poster or anything like that? I don't know yet. Yeah. I you you haven't looked yet. through anything yet? No. Yeah. I really just kind of went out and had fun yesterday. Good. Enjoy the moment. Shoot yesterday too at JM, mm -hmm. right? The championship shoot? Yes. Awesome. He was showing off those pictures when we were in uh, pre judging yesterday. He was just showing the back of his camera and stuff like that. You were jumping in the air, all that kind of fun stuff. <laughs> he was like, I'm going to have to do this. And then I was like, do you want me to flip? He's like, I don't want you to hurt yourself. She's like, no, I flip yeah. for a living. That's what I, I like, do. <laughs> what i do yeah awesome well i appreciate you taking a quick quick stop here what are you gonna do today you're just gonna go Maybe hang go out to new york I'm yeah be drinking there you um, go i don't yeah just vibing just experiencing new york yeah are you going home tomorrow yeah okay yeah that's always a great idea like i'm i'm from upstate new york mm -hmm. i lived right out while and it's there's no place in the world like it i'm glad i don't live there anymore <laughs> But you have to, if you come here, you have to go experience yeah. it. Yeah. Um, we went, I think we went to Mount Houghton yesterday. I think we're going to go towards Brooklyn today. Okay. Okay. So we'll Sample all the different pizzas, pizzas, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Well, congratulations again. You are now, we were talking about this yesterday. You are now stuck with me for life. Yes. So it is what it is. She's. She's bound to it now. Okay. It's like, it's me, or it's you getting stuck with me, because then you're going to find out how weird I am, and then you're going to be like, damn. <laughs> That's okay. Weird is good. We were just talking about this. Well, hey, weird is good. Weird is good. So, well, thank you so much for joining us real quick. I appreciate it, and hope you guys enjoyed it, too. So we'll be on to the next one. <laughs> Yay! I'd just like to take a moment to welcome our new channel partners, Prozis. If you are unfamiliar with them, go ahead and go down into my description box now, click on the link, go check out their site. They are the leading supplement sports nutrition company based out of Portugal, been around for 17 years. You might be asking what makes Prozis unique? Well, everything that they make is made in-house or with trusted partners. They have to go through rigorous testing in Portugal in order to even get any products on the market. So what you're going to find, you're going to find really high quality pure supplementation. And one of the biggest things for me is I have some GI issues. So being able to eat some of these more healthy protein treats and things like that and not have any gut issues, oh, worth its weight in gold. Go check them out. Click on the link in my description box below. Use the code cuties10 to get all of your discounts and even some special surprises. They're always putting out some amazing promotions. Let them know that I sent you and let me know what you think. Thanks again for watching and thank you for supporting our channel. Now, Go optimize your own athletic abilities and check out Prozis.com. Get right on my leg and we're good. We got our we got our mic here. We're good to go. All right, we're back with another segment from NBC Universe here today. And we got Angel with us this time. Hi, so guys. introduce yourself a little bit. Tell tell them a little bit about you, your division, what you do, that what you did here today or yesterday. Not today, my, yesterday. Yeah. I know it's all a blur. What was today? Um, <laughs> well, my name is Angel. I am a wellness athlete. Um I've been doing this now for a few years. Back in 21, CCTS is mm -hmm. when um, I first met Sean, um, and I was unsure if I was bikini or wellness, and Sean set me straight. So <laughs> I've been on this journey then since uh, January 21 um, in wellness. Mm -hmm. um, so competed yesterday in universe, got fourth. Um, so my first placing ever in a national show, so quite excited. Best I've ever looked. So we're totally stoked, got my feedback, and we're going to try to apply it in two weeks, go to Masters Nationals and see if we can um, improve. Yeah, yeah. So the, the crazy part about it, so yes, like you said, I'm going to close these blinds. I know, it's like, like got really, it. really bright. It came out. I want to keep it rolling. It doesn't yeah. matter. The sun came out because it was raining earlier. Oh, I know. The poor men with their tans. I know. I thought about that, too. I was like, thank God. Oh, yeah, that's much better. There we go. All right, I was <laughs> we were just blown out all of a sudden. Um, the I was thinking about because earlier it was pouring. Right now it's beautiful, beautiful out, but 
that happened today and not yesterday with all the hair and makeup. Oh, I thought, I mean, tan is one thing, but yeah, like for the women. kind of cover up. Yeah, 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 making cover up. Just umbrella, you're good. But hair, yeah. mm, no, not so much. Anyways, so <laughs> what I was saying was, um, <laughs> so yeah, she came to CCTS and we did it. We do a segment there most years when I come up and get on stage or whatever um, and ask, you know, what is my division? Where would I fit? And she did that and we're like, ah, oh, your wellness, 100% yeah. wellness. So um, how many national shows have you done before this one? So I did um, junior nats and North 2. Okay. Um, and then last year I took off. And in 22, we just know my conditioning just was not on yeah. point. Um, and so just worked, grew. And finally, I think we can, actually the feedback for the first time ever yesterday was that my conditioning was right on point. Yeah. So I'm like, that's, that's amazing to hear. So yeah. we need to make, but to hear that my conditioning was good was something I was like, oh my gosh, I never, I never yeah. nailed conditioning. So, well, it's funny because, um, if you, if you feel comfortable with it, do you want to talk a little bit about the challenges that you have as far as the yeah. conditioning is concerned? Go for it. Yeah. So, um, in 20, 18, I was diagnosed with a heart. Um, I get ventricular tachycardia and it's actually exercise induced. So being an athlete, that kind of stinks. I used to be an endurance athlete um, and I could no longer race and things because of my heart condition. Um, I have an ICD pacemaker in my chest, uh, which has actually shocked me a few times. So it's, it's kept me alive. Mm. Um, but I'm on um, different beta blockers and antiarrhythmic drugs. So this medication I'm on and my heart condition keeps my heart rate really low. So I'm a challenging athlete for coaches as far as heart rate zones, keep your heart rate in whatever zone. Well, my heart rate rarely goes over hundred because of my medication. So it's very much um, all, all lists, miss, very effort, ice, mm -hmm. heart rate effort. Um, so that's challenging with coaches and coaches knowing what medication and any supplementation that I might want to add into my protocols, um, just have to be very mindful um, with interactions um, with my heart, my medications, pre-workouts, pumps, anything stim, like things that I have to consider more than other others might have to um, just because of my condition. So it, yeah. it made it challenging. And so luckily my coach, I'm with, um, I switched coaches this year with the body fusion and Drew has been amazing with um, finding a protocol that worked for my body, having to get me into ridiculously low calories because that was the struggle in the past too. up all the cardio down all the food whatever we can do and my body is um, my metabolism just always will stall. stall yeah um and there's just nowhere to go and that's what happened last year why i never got on the stage like i had planned because i just running into the hole and it was like we, we got nowhere to go from here yeah so yeah he got me in a really good place um and actually i was almost crying this week, like, Drew, don't give me no more food. <laughs> so, like, I can't, I literally cannot eat another grain of rice. So um, he said to me, he's like, I got to get her to eat. I got yeah. to eat. I gotta get her to eat. I got to get her to eat. But to go from an athlete in the past that might have to go under a thousand calories yeah. um, to, to he's giving me like 2,100. It's just, it's mind blowing. It's a bit of a you know, messes with messes, your mind yeah, too, to be like, I can do it, but I'm like, just gonna do what he's saying. It's working. And so it did. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll say seeing you at the shows and stuff, this is hundred percent your yeah. best, your best. So it's really cool to see that you're able to get to that level, yeah. even with the health challenges yeah. and things like that. So you, cause you also do marathons quite a bit, right? I haven't. Um, now I just do some little five Ks because okay. I don't want to okay. lose my muscle. Right, right, right. But before, runs an Ironman and all of that. But but now it's just I'll just jump in on a five. I won't train, but yeah. like, I'll jump in just for fun with friends and cardio. Yeah, like I did a five k. Um, was it last week? Two weeks ago. I was. I remember seeing. But it pictures. was just one. But I told Drew, I'm like, hey, you gave me 40 minutes of cardio, so I'm just gonna do this five k yeah. for 40. Swap it out. So even then, yeah. just to still hang out with my other friends. Yep. Um, or we do hikes, but it's nothing that goes over. So yeah, keeping it because I'm gonna have to preserve this muscle. I think um Ashley K does marathons and stuff like that. Too. Yeah, I think under 10 yeah. Ks, five, yeah. 10 Ks, yeah, yeah, shorter races, just for fun cardio, and you can then still do it at whatever your zones are that you're supposed to do and get a medal and have, yeah, have, have fun, some with, fun with it. It's just having fun with friends. That's mm -hmm. all I think when we get deep into prep and cardio gets crazy. Anytime I can do it with a friend and still check the box properly with my coach, because that's the big thing, depending upon what type of cardio so you're not just wasted cardio but when it's like oh it's lists it's miss it's something that i can 
can make it fun and, and not just derail the, right. the, the, the program. And I well, I even say that with my clients because they'll ask me, do I need to do this on the treadmill? Do I need to do it on the stepper? Do I need to do it on the I'm like, I don't care. Yeah, just as long as you enjoy it, I want you to pick a pick a modality that you enjoy. Yeah. And and you know, like you said, get it into the, the heart rate zone or box. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's cool. So um conditioning was on point. What was some other feedback that you got? So um for me, I we always know I'm I'm um very petite person. I'm a little over five one and just my frame and structure in general, I'm just very small. Yeah. Um and so I already knew I was tiny, I feel tiny. And so it was, you know, I need to grow a little bit upper body, which challenging. Um, I've had so many upper body surgeries with my heart condition, heart mm, surgeries. Yeah. Um, so I think I had four heart, four upper body surgeries since 2019. And so every one, um, derailing upper body progress. Mm. So I do have a smaller upper body, which also was good for wellness. But so I need to grow my upper body a little bit more and then just more, um, more more lower, more depth, more density, which we know. So that's going to be the game plan um, when we get into improvement. And in the meantime, we're just going to work for the next two weeks. So I think tightening up a little, a little bit more um, pump. I don't think I pumped enough on upper body. I was so focused on lower body um, yesterday because, you know, we want to pump our legs. So I'm like, okay, maybe I'll do a little bit more of a pump on my upper body so we can get them a little bit more yeah. full for two weeks. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, looking at you, the compl- like your shape was really good, but you are on the smaller yeah. side. So, you know, you can just pump away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't, I'm not like a lot of wellness, poor the wellness girls are like, I can't train upper body or I can't, they tell me not to pump. And for me, it's like, okay, I need to, just everything. I need to just <laughs> pump it up. So, so that the, just, the, I mean, two weeks, we don't have much time. So yeah. obviously I'm going to, and posing, I can always work on my, my posing, but that's the one thing I'm um, super excited about this, this time is the only time I think I've ever liked my routine. Good. That's why, like, I did not buy the videos. Where I was like, going oh, buy the videos. I'm like, no, because I don't. I'll buy pictures because you just get a good shot. Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. I normally don't like my flow. I don't like my walk. And so it's the first time I'm like, oh, I actually good. don't hate this. So we're, I mean, practicing getting better. But I'm just, it's never been my my thing. Yeah. So it's so well, that's I, always fun too because you're adding something new each show where you're yeah. like, oh, I really like this, or you know what I mean. Like, it, like that's the name of the game. It's always improving, whatever yeah. it may be, whether yeah. it's conditioning or size or you know your stage presence and posing you yeah. so that's 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 cool so the one thing that i thought was crazy and we were all we kept commenting on it in the audience the whole time is you know you're a class a yeah. the class a's just so you guys oh know gosh. here at here at universe they do age groups too so they do masters class a's across the board were like 30 girls deep it was ridiculous <laughs> in class b there's like seven eight you know maybe two call outs oh versus God, versus four. like four call outs and every one of them i was like that's the that's the hard part about wellness yeah. because it's the short girl division and it was just the way that they divided it so here for um masters in our open is a is five two and but because they limited they took out one height class for um pro cards they'd made a five, four and below. Mm. And I think just in general, if you were going to combine a division, they should have combined C and D because there's not many tall girls don't combine the shortest where that's because a lot of bikini girls are Are tall, but for wellness, all your girls are short. short. So that doesn't make sense. I don't think as far as a promoter standpoint, if you're going to to separate it or I know it's traditional five, four and below, but if you were going to combine it, maybe five, three and below, like yeah. change up the numbers yeah, yeah. And, and look at your stats. When people are putting in the height, they should have easily um, did some maneuvering. It would just would have made better for their whole flow and not having four call outs. I agree with that. You know, and that's, that's just something, I don't know if they just not had to deal with that before and yeah. they just didn't think. Yeah. Yeah. You know just know a, I mean? yeah common sense. Yeah. Things that I guess they sometimes don't. And it was even, even, um, ran the, one of my friends and she checked in and she was right at that five, four cusp. And I was like, you know, you want to go up. Um, you're, yeah. you're for, for wellness. I'm like, it's better to be the, the short shortest the tall class. in the, in the tall class. Yes. And I think the guy that was back there is so used to the other divisions. He's like, no, you don't want to be, I think they're thinking of bikini. Yeah. So he convinced her to stay in the a class 
when she was just Almost. over five four, I'm like, girl, you should have went to it to be. Yeah. But it is what it is. Um, you know, because I'm like, she would have done so much. Probably well, but better. the thing too though is that once you win your pro card, there's no it, exactly, and it doesn't. Card. But it just would have been like competing against twelve. No, plus absolutely, 30. absolutely. <laughs> no, you you want to you want to hedge your bets, hundred yes, percent. After sure. paying all the money, but I'm for like, sure. Oh, that's the one thing with wellness. It's better to be. You know, you, you just with your dimensions are short little stocky right. legs. Well, and I've noticed this even with like how the trends of the, the divisions are going ever since incepted into the into the IPB. I feel like the bikini girls are getting taller and taller. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like the actual the actual average median average of bikini girls is becoming taller because what happens is, is if a short girl starts putting on any kind of size, yeah, she's got to go. The judging feedback is go to wellness. Mm -hmm. So all in the wellness. <laughs> and then all the tall, no, girls, tall girls, they're realizing yeah. like, I can't, I mean, some, there are some amazing, very tall wellness right. women, yeah. but, but it is, general, a, and, but it's yes. a lot of work for them for those long muscle bellies. So yeah, yeah. a lot of them just do better. No, it's the same concept when you're looking yeah. at the men. I mean, that's why most open male bodybuilders are not over the, over six foot. There's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that it's harder to fill out a bigger frame like that. Mm -hmm. So no, I mean, it makes sense. It's just, it's just funny to me because you can see the trend, even when we're at mm -hmm. national shows like this, like the, the G and H classes are huge. Oh my gosh. It was for back, bikini. back there. Um, at the end yesterday and there was, and there was one, she was just like <laughs> hanging out and she was there. She was like, they're like, how tall are you? She said, I'm six one. I'm yeah. Like, I'm five one. So woman, yeah, there's a full just foot. like a full foot oh, taller than me. I'm like, man, no, I have a few posing yeah. clients that are over six foot tall and it's just crazy. Like, but at that point, again, I'm five nine, so I'm even short yeah. comparison to that. That's, I mean, that's becoming more and more popular and it's becoming more and more rewarded too, again, because of the change in the divisions and all of that too. So, so you mentioned going into master's nationals. So what is going to be the change between now and then? What are you going to do other than just trying to fill out a little bit? What, how are you going to do that? Well, that I have to figure out with the code. I had a quick little powwow this morning, um, to just decide for sure what, what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Um, and so now we'll figure out what plan, what he's going to tweak. Um, already did my cardio workout today. So it was like, hit the ground running. There's no, yeah. um, no break with two weeks. Um, so I responded really good. I'd had three weeks between my Dallas show to here. Um, and I was able to really tighten up, um, in those three weeks, um, with my conditioning. And so we'll probably, I don't know if we'll just do the same thing, which he was actually feeding me a lot of food. Um, cardio wasn't too bad, just mm -hmm. mostly just steps on doing it. My body was just my metabolism. That we just need to tighten up, tighten up the skin more. So hopefully, just two weeks, everything will just kind of continue to yeah vacuum. Kind of go suck in and then fill it all out. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> we'll see. But I'm, I mean, I'm not quite sure what, what, how he might shake yeah. it up yet. Um, since he's dealing with the men today. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. on plan. Well, that's the thing. It's like in, in two weeks, you can make some significant changes to your look. You're not yeah. going to grow a ton of muscle nope. or anything like that, but you could drop body fat. Yeah. You can, and you can fill everything out a little yeah, bit I think more. It's really just tightening the skin yeah. 42. So, you know, yeah. we're like whatever we can do um, to really tighten the skin and to share a, a bad story with me two week or week ago, I got a bad sunburn. And so um, my skin, it was already kind of a little bit messed up. So I had splotchiness with some tan oh. and had problems with, um, the sunburn healing that this the tan didn't want to take certain places in my oh, legs. Wow. Um, so yeah, that was, that was poor, poor, uh, unless with protein had to do with my, um, my skin issues, but so yeah, be careful with, with tanning. Um, that happened with Yulia that, you know, if you, she, hers, her tan was way worse than yours because of yeah. her, her, her sunburn, sun, sun, tan, sunburn. sunburn. I, was, I don't know. I'm mixing up words. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long weekend. Yes. We it's not even weekend. I'm like, what day is it? It's Saturday. I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's all over. <laughs> but yeah, I've got to, got to be careful. Normally, I'll go to a tanning bed and I get a, um, a little base, just one or two sessions. I do it, whatever the max is. I normally do it two or three minutes below, mm -hmm. like I'm not maxing out. I just want to get a little good um, base, especially living in Texas, going to just walking out or going to my son's um, sporting events. So I was just trying to even out, and I don't normally don't burn. Well, I got a new product from my wellness um, center, like a lotion. Um, and so I was putting it on my body. Um, and then when I read, read the label afterwards, because when I, when I like turning into a lobster, what's going on? I'm like, what is new? And I, and the label says 
you know, don't go into the sun. They're one of the main key ingredients is the interaction. It can cause sunburn. Make sure you put on sunblock. So read your labels. Wow. If you're going to go. So I just had me red lobster. Wow. So it was like, oh, all of the the sunless um, or the sunburn creams and aloe, like bathing in it. But um, it's always peeling and just the different skin. So be careful yeah. with that with tanning. Well, that'll so, give you a couple of weeks to heal yeah, so that. that so that's, that's, that's one thing I'm going to fix and hopefully it will tighten up and, and make my my skin a little bit. That's better. the thing too, because people don't realize too, when you burn your skin, you get inf inflammation. Yeah. yeah. I, I was up a couple of days afterwards on the yeah. scale um, with inflammation. So I was taking more salt baths and more other stuff. And then but just really trying to protect the skin. Yeah. Um, Cause I'm like, I don't want to peel. And then I did start peeling. So then I was over exfoliating to get the dead skin off. So then it was like all the little micro cuts. So it's, it's just, yeah. you get down this hole. Tan is so <laughs> huge. You're so huge when it comes to this. Like I can't even tell you sitting in the audience, if you have a bad tan, you can't judge the physique. I'm telling you, it, it's just so distracting. If the tan is bad, it's terrible to say, but it will lose you a show. Yeah. Even if you look phenomenal, if your tan sucks, can't see what you put up. Because no, your tan looked great. And, but, yeah. but it was the, the night before and the things and then all of the emergency stuff we had to do um, as far as the tanning company to try to fix it. Yeah. I gave them more more problems with my skin, but luckily luckily it was okay. But those are just some of the things we're going to try to fix. Okay. And then after down at that point, regardless of what happens, or I, what's the plan? Probably 90% will we'll shut it down. We'll see what happens, but only because yeah in the end of the month with my daughter for her um she graduated from high school so it's a mother daughter uh trip so i want to enjoy it but we're still going to be good because either way season or not we we don't want to we're going to reverse talk, good yeah and, we talk about this all the time it's like you can you can still go into a vacation yeah. after a show and ha and be fine and enjoy yourself but you're an athlete 24 seven. Yeah. And I'm not trying to put on 20 pounds. Correct. So it's not like I'm going to go on a binger, but I'm going to get some pokeball and some acai yeah. bowls. Yeah. So, but. Well, that's moderation. the thing too. Again, again, when you're thinking and you're, you're getting your feedback about your skin and stuff like mm -hmm. that too. It's like, you got to remember that as we're getting older, our skin doesn't have the elasticity. Mm -hmm. So putting on all that weight is not good oh, no, for you. Not at all. And at all. And I, you know, we, we always, know what we need to do majority of us know physically what we need to do but it's just so hard and every time it's like i'm gonna nail this reverse i'm gonna nail it and then all of a sudden it's like oh five ten twenty yeah Shoot, where did this 30 pounds come from mm -hmm. like you just blink and so this time yeah it's this time we're gonna nail the reverse <laughs> well and i'll give you a little a little piece of advice too because i think a lot of people like the whole nailing the reverse thing you still have to give yourself grace oh yeah because you're gonna screw up yeah but the thing is too is that screw up is never as bad as you think it is yeah. what typically happens with people is they screw up and they think they just screw the whole thing so they just keep going yeah it's like no no no. If a little mess up is okay yeah you're gonna be fine you know just 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 don't let it continue yeah right don't let it be like oh well, i screwed the whole thing i'm just gonna keep going no like just just breathe you'll be all right a lot of times what happens is you get that body dysmorphia when you come out of a oh, show for sure 100 and you're like i just put on you know 10 pounds i i i Fuck myself let's just keep going but it doesn't work like that like it's like you and it's funny because you look back months later at what you thought was a lot of weight yeah and you're like damn i was still lean as fuck yeah <laughs> And, and then it's the same when you go this way because then it was like I'm not lean enough I'm not lean enough and then yeah. you hear my conditioning was good because you know social media so just yeah. super hard and super vascular and all of this and and I do have some thicker skin in my legs so I'm like I don't really ever see good quad veins maybe I'm not lean enough why am I not seeing these um, and and so yeah you just get messed in your head and then I'm like so thinking I wasn't going to be good enough so for that to be my feedback that yeah yeah, my conditioning was was good. Yeah, it was exciting. No, it definitely you just don't. It definitely was. I mean, again, I was sitting there right front and center with Drew, and um, you know, the only thing that I see is what you talked about. I mean, we just need need some more pop, needs mm -hmm. more density, that kind of thing. So the more density you get, the more pop you're going to get. But as far as how lean you were and how conditioned you were, you're right on. So that's just a matter of filling that all out. So, um, what? Any closing thoughts that you'd like to give anybody out there that may be watching this that may be interested? Hmm. I would just say just um, if if you have like some challenges and stuff, just, you know, don't don't let it um, just feeling like you're just so defeated and that there's yeah. no like answers and ways out because 
you know, just keep on keep on trying or keep pushing towards your goals or dreams. Like, you know, like I said, I thought I could never like conditioning was going to be one thing I just wouldn't ever be able to do. And I was able to nail that and just, or just changing your, your, your mindset. That, um, no matter what work or family or whatever challenges, um, you know, there's, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. So mm -hmm. I just try to, to find the positive. Um, and there's find always that. a solution to yeah. every problem. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. No matter, I mean, what it is and if you have to take a break then that's yeah. that's what it is or you know health or family but what i think there's just always there's always an option yes to to still do it so if, if it's what you want so. yeah i mean you you know you're a living proof of example of that so i think that's awesome and i think it's great like and then there's nothing that feels better than when you're like oh i found the solution yeah you know yeah. it's like oh man i did that you know so so that's really cool. In regard, and again, on any kind of placing or anything like that, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I, I found the issue with my problem. I figured it out. Yeah, you know? found a way to make it work. And yeah. staying healthy, and you know, we we still do um, labs all the time. Yeah. Um, so constantly looking at my blood work to make sure everything is is still good, good and in line, and, and it's always still health health first. Mm -hmm. 100%. Um, Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming by. I appreciate it. Congratulations on your on your thank top you. four finish here Yay. at NPC Universe. And we'll be back for the next one. <laughs> Works out. All right, guys, we're back again. <laughs> so we have yet another segment here, and we are here with Miss Kelby. So Kelby also competed this weekend. Um, this was your second national show this year, right? And how many national shows have you done total? Total. Four. Four? Since when? 2021 to... 2024 too. Okay, talk a little louder. You're a little okay. quiet. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. The, we we we're very like we don't edit stuff out of this unless we say something really terrible. <laughs> we like people to know how we are real. You know that kind of thing. I think I think our listeners like that aspect of it, right? Mm -hmm. So, this was kind of your comeback year, right? Yes, that term has been used quite why often. is that why why is it your comeback year what have you gone through in order to get to here first of all your your bikini she's bikini so that's the first thing yeah <laughs> i know right <laughs> yeah 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 well that we just had this conversation with angel a minute ago where when she came to ccts mm -hmm. she needed to figure out which division she was supposed to be in so she we put her into wellness right to mm -hmm. that so go ahead and start with that part so my first time at cuties conquering the stage my favorite thing that you did was that physique assessment and when I first started as an athlete, and you have a lot of background as an athlete in all different sports, you really don't know where you fit because different sports will help create different style physiques. I got so much feedback from different people that I was a tweener between figure or wellness or bikini. I had too much muscle for bikini, and it's like I didn't fit. But it wasn't that I didn't fit a certain category, I just didn't fit a certain level yet. Mm -hmm. And it was you looking at me and reassuring. What kind of oxygen and what did I want to look like that reassured me what direction to go in? Mm -hmm. And I didn't necessarily need to shrink. I needed to find the level that I was competitive at. Right. It's right. just take more time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's always about who you're next to. Mm -hmm. It was you and Jamie D. Bernard that actually looked at me. It was like, you're not figurable of muscularity in For the bikini. bikini division. Right. You just have to, you know bring down the body fat to really reveal your shape and stuff like that, which has been an ongoing mm -hmm. thing. I think for everybody has to deal with the body fat stuff. But. Yeah. Well, we just talked about that again. We talked about that stuff with Angel and her, um, you know, health limitators, you know, what is, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, restrictions. Yeah. Basically. Restrictions. And yeah, with her, her stuff, she has complications that you have to, you get so close mm -hmm. and then these things kind of come into play and you have to address those in a different manner than normal athletes or healthy athletes or young athletes. And since 2021, I've kind of come to my own mm -hmm. health restrictions that have inhibited me from competing for three years. Yeah. And that's why this is my comeback year yep. is because it's taken three years to come to a state of recovery and health to allow this. Yeah. And it was like, how far can we get in a prep healthy and sustainably? It was all about research this year. That's why it was a comeback. One, that I still have the same amount of muscle after all my injuries. And could my health and my new condition sustain a prep? Yeah. Because it's such a fragile state your body's in. Mm -hmm. For those of you that are, are not familiar, what 
or the surgeries you had to go through stage and a leg brace and everything. So, yeah. So I started as a normal, healthy athlete. Like, I mean, 28 years old, you know, history of all this stuff. I've had two kids. It's what got me into bodybuilding. I wanted to lose the baby weight. I loved it. And I realized that this athletic shape kind of came out after losing all that. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get a more intense goal that kept me healthy. Well, what I did was I had an injury when I was in high school, an ACL tear that over the course of 12 years slowly gave out. Mm -hmm. And when I stepped off stage in 2021 North Americans, I blew my knee out again. Mm -hmm. The injury just gave out. Well, what it did was immediately she's in period and my body fat rose pretty quickly because you can't do the cardio to reverse. Now we did everything we could with our nutrition, but at the same time, what can you do when you can't burn those mm -hmm. calories? So from that, and then my body fat rising quickly, I realized I had this because body fat increases estrogen. My body started attacking the level of estrogen that flooded my body. And so I went through over the course of two and a half, three years, three knee surgeries and two abdominal surgeries. And the abdominal surgeries ended up being a total hysterectomy. Oh. So then we've had to start from my hormones from zero. So I went into surgical menopause for six months. And I tell you, my husband deserves a medal of honor for putting up with me for six months. You say, you think prep is hard? That man is a godsend for putting up for me with me, like menopause in your 30s with a, th it, it's, it was just, it was torment. Like you, you, you're 33, but your insides are over 50 at this point. Like, yeah. what do you do? Am I masters? Am I not? Yeah. This doesn't scream masters, but the inside does. Mm -hmm. So it's having people like you and Paul on my side and just everybody that's come together to help me is just this army that's been built just because that very first CCTS that I came yeah. to with you. Yeah. Those connections that I created. Yeah. So isn't that crazy how that works though? It's I would like, not be this successful if it yeah. wasn't for that first CCTS. Yeah. We were just, and again, we were just talking about this. It's like, it's, it's, it's crazy how you build a team around you without even realizing it sometimes until you need it. And then you realize they're yeah. all there mm -hmm. and it, it's it, like, it gives me goosebumps to know you have, She's got literal goosebumps. Like, just, like I don't know if you can see, see them, but she's got literal goosebumps. Not goosebumps, but I have She has like, literal goosebumps. Yeah. I've uh -huh. never had that type of support community, yeah. anything. And that's why even through the three years that I was injured, like I, the first year I came back, I was like, I know I'm hurt and I can't compete. Will you still sponsor me because mm -hmm. it's the community that meant more to me. So I've tried to represent you as a community person until I could compete again and wear the gorgeous suit. Yeah. Uh, which and yeah, which is Sparkle <laughs> Kitty. <laughs> well, you guys know we're we're honest here. She if if you ever watch any of her stage videos, just watch any of her stage videos. You'll understand why we call it Sparkle Kitty, and I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> You're giving them like a green light to stare in a specific area. I sure am. Just... That's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> Now we've created this like little scavenger hunt. Let's see who comes oh, yeah. back with their yeah. right comment, hand. Comment, comment in the below. comment. Yeah, can you find Sparkle Kitty? How did my suit get the name Sparkle Kitty? And Jen Lynch, you are and Jennifer Lynch is, is disqualified. Answering this. <laughs> That's too funny. And if you have video evidence, you get. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's pretty obvious when you look, just so you know. Uh, so, so yeah. So the the challenge, you know, this year is like like you said, it's like finding those puzzle pieces that all fit together, right? Which you've done a really good job. I mean, the last two national shows, you've gotten into the first call out, you know, top five of junior nationals. What was your placing here at this one? It's eighth. I think it's eighth. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's still, I think it was, was it eight in top first call out or was it 10? And it was eight. It was eight. Okay. Some of the show, just so you guys know, we talked about this with wellness too. I mean, some of these bikini classes, they were doing 10 girls in a call out. It was freaking nuts. So very deep competition, very, very deep competition here. And you did open. So, um, so with that, like, what is it that you feel like you have to do at this point to get yourself up and over that hump? What do you, where, where, what do you need to do next? Well, my feedback is conditioning on the, on the backside. Um, it's a complicated case really, because one, I didn't realize to be, I was going to be this successful right. in this season. Well, because, back. yeah, because that's the other thing too. The last time you were on stage, you were what call out? I was not this successful as a normal, healthy 28 year old. Right. I mean, my last season, I got third at a regional show because they said I was too big 
and but I was already qualified from the year before to do a nationals. So it was like go to nationals and see if your size compare. Right. Yeah. 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 So then I went to um, the one that's coming up. USA's. It's now in Vegas. What is that one? Yeah, it's muscle contest. Yeah, yeah, it's USA's. So yes. I did that one when it was in Arizona. And okay, I got seven. And that was exciting to mm -hmm. me. But I did see where I belonged muscular wise. Now conditioning has always been an issue for me, and we're still getting there. I didn't realize I had endometriosis, which was skyrocketing like estrogen levels and stuff. So I did have conditioning issues back then, but not as bad now. Yeah, and we never really knew what it was. So so actually by blowing my knee, other issue that I had to address. Yeah. And so now coming back like this year alone, actually the stats are in 2021, third at a regional ninth, eighth or ninth at my first one. And then 13th actually went down. And so, so to come back and now I got, oh, I got in the overall, which was pretty yep. awesome. My first national show back, I cracked the top five. Yep. Who fucking knew? Yeah. Like, and so, I didn't plan to do universe, but yep. when you crack top five, it's like kind of use that momentum into the next show. Mm -hmm. And it was two more weeks. Like yes. you could pull my feedback. Let's tighter on, on the reef. We'll grind two more weeks, go into this next show. You just saw these judges, but then you just uncover more complications that comes with the condition. Yep. But that's what the season was about. Discovery. Yes. It was come back and discover yep. and just like data collection to create a successful year next year yeah Greg, papa bear yeah that ultimately triggered me to compete this year i've okay. been holding off and holding off and doing so much testing even through the sponsorship with hana testing myself at low levels high cardios through working what could i sustain over that off season from the sponsorship yes yes so it was a whole data collection period and i felt like that was successful mm-hmm so then to come into a new season, I was like, I felt ready yep. and prepared, but you're not prepared when your body gets to a certain body fat percentage and you're controlling your daily hormone dosage. Mm -hmm. It's like you need a doctor on hand constantly to check your blood work and your hormones to maintain a certain body fat percentage. The cardio level is like your, your metabolism is spiking and going down and your thyroid is spiking and going down. And it's just, and we all have trouble holding water. But it's, it was obvious. It's from the moment I would wake up, it's like four pounds of water would just flood. Yeah. And you could just see it. It, it wasn't conditioning necessarily. It yeah. just, so now we know. Well, and you can see it when you're on stage too. I mean, when you talk yeah. to people, it's like, you can see like, this is not a issue with her work. You know what I mean? It's not an issue with her not pushing hard enough. We know that we can see when you get to a certain level and you start watching between if it's hormonal mm -hmm. and it's a, it's just an issue we got to figure out mm -hmm. or if it's the work ethic, you can tell the difference. You know what I mean? And it's definitely not the work ethic. Are you tell. on the phone with me almost yeah. every day doing two hours cardio? Like I'm pushing, I wanted it so bad. And I mean, on the other hand, it's, it hasn't been a linear prep. Well, numbers in a prep, typically the weight goes down and the cardio goes up and the food goes down and you, you watch these trending methods. Well, I'm sure I drove my coach nuts and I yep. drove you nuts because one day I'd wake up 116, the next day I'm 122. And you're like, what the fuck what did happened? you do? Like, did yeah. you eat a cheesecake? And I'm like, no, everything was regimented. I, I don't know. Yep. Been trying to time things perfectly and the most predictable thing we could. I became a robot at home. Mm -hmm. The doses at the exact same time, the new methods of certain medications that were a little bit more mild. So I didn't skew my baseline, mm -hmm. which was my biggest concern. And then you just come here and of course it wasn't you, it wasn't my coach. It wasn't me, but it was my body. It's your so body. Yeah. I was more betrayed by my body. Yeah. I think Yeah. not anyone else. And you can't get mad at your body because no, you, you got to live in it. <laughs> But I'm a person that goes through a moment and I, I think everything is a learning opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. These top 100%. Olympians in their age. Yep. Like I know I'm two years away from masters. That's cool. I'll do it. Yeah. I'll rock it. Yeah. But it's all data collection and the stage is always there. And every time you do more, the more you learn about yourself mm -hmm. and the healthier you get. Mm -hmm. So it's like a win-win. Yep. Well, we talked about that. I mean, it's 
We, we use this term math. You should even use the term masters until you're over 40. I really don't because <laughs> we still like winning last night. Like younger yeah. Than you. I mean, and you look at like the top athletes in even in bikini now, I mean, Ashley caught lost her 36, you know, uh, Angelica is 40 now, but she was winning her titles when she was 35, 36 Stop years old, you know? Yeah. 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 At 40, you know what I mean? So it's not, this is not a, like age is not a death sentence in this sport. I hate when people like use that as an excuse. Actually, we tend to do better because we know our bodies better. Like you said, we've collected a lot more data. That's mm -hmm. that's the first thing. We've been able to learn how to manage it a whole lot better. We're a little bit more stable. Our minds are usually a little bit more stable. <laughs> usually. Yeah, we know what we want. The older you yes. get, the more yeah. the wiser you get, you know what you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You make decisions quicker. You're not just like, well, what do you think? Well, what do you think? No, this is what I want. This, yep. This is that's what right. I need. Yep. And you get stuff done faster. Mm -hmm. That's right. And you got the means to do it. And, you know, we just do Botox and fillers to keep ourselves <laughs> my friends are, so, are oh, like i have such a wide variety of friends but none of them are younger than me it's very rare because mm -hmm. of the mindset that yes i'm in i love older women and i love being around communities like that i always attach to that vibe mm -hmm. and so too that mindset just pushes us so much further and at the same time like Y'all look younger than me sometimes. So I'm like, I need Botox and fillers. Every time I go into a spa, I'm like, what do I need? Do I, I know. I, need I gotta get touched younger. up. My, my Botox, <laughs> my, I gotta get my Botox touched up. I'm good. It's, I went in to get my laser stuff done before I came. And she's like, do we want to schedule a facial? And I'm like, what are you trying to say? <laughs> I know. All right. Wait, what? What? What are you trying to say? I know. Wait, hold on. There's a lot of movement. <laughs> <I know. laughs> No, I literally like it's so funny because I, I think there's a. We, I was saying this yesterday too. There's a there's a fine line. You know, there's a line between where you're maintaining and there's a line between where you're becoming plastic. There were there's a lot of plastic out there. Oh, a yeah. lot, lot of plastic. So and it's funny because you can see it when it gets here. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. So my favorite story was like I went in and I'm I'm blonde and like I get like blonde peach fuzz. And yeah, I do get, too. Like, my eyebrows wax, but it's rare because. They're blonde, so I can go really. I know you noticed yesterday same. doing my eyebrows. Well, I can do the same thing because mine are blonde too. Yeah. This is this is all filled in. If I didn't have them filled in right now, I would have no eyebrows. None. So I go to get them waxed, and the lady, she goes, "You want upper lip too?" And I'm like, "Do I need upper lip?" You you start hearing the signs the older you get. So listen. Yeah. So what's that? Know. What's that meme? There's that meme that every every woman out there is fighting one chin hair. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like I literally have the one. I'm like ah. What's that movie? It's an Adam Sandler movie where the guy's got that like little beard that just floats. Oh, I know what you're talking about, but I don't. I don't remember which which movie it is though. Amazing. They're all the same. All <laughs> they're all, all, all yeah, the they're same. Great. They're all the same movie. Yeah. <laughs> they really are. But I know exactly what you're talking about, and I think you're right. I think it might be wedding, wedding sort of, but regardless, it's. She's yeah. always in the band, and it's, it's there's like no wind in the room. But it's yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know which one it is. Again, comment below if you remember which Adam Sandler movie we're talking about. We're so. Start <laughs> it's it's too like funny. A game show, though. I know. So, okay, so we have the comeback year. So at this point, have you made game plans as far as, far as what you're doing next? Are you going into an off season or are you going to continue to compete and try to collect more data? Or what is, what's the plan at this point? Do you know, or are you just waiting to see what your body's going to do? What are you going to do? I will say I knew it per se, because the moment I walked off that stage from prejudging, I felt a sense of mental relief. Okay. I felt like me constantly trying to figure out myself, like a science experiment was so heavy yeah because I've, and i and i felt pressure to be successful too because right. Right. i'm not a cocky i have muscle i know i have shape and i was like i feel like this could be an awesome year like if every puzzle and everybody is together, telling you you're this, this close, close. Yeah, you're this and, you close know, and that does feed an ego so then that like creates a higher expectation of a season so am i disappointed i didn't do better this time yeah we all would be mm -hmm. you know especially to come from top five to Right. But my body literally gave up. It's like, okay, this it's been too it's long. Done. It's been 22 week prep. Yeah. I mean, we did a longer prep. I've never done preps that long, Yeah, but we intentionally did it to do it slowly. So That's to right. see how my health would fluctuate, I had blood work done the entire time, but now my next goal is to reestablish a new baseline. Okay. I'm talking to some of the resources you've provided with mm -hmm. me over this weekend and the people there's new things that I get to ask my doctor to test for, to yes. add to my blood work panel. And this is fascinating. Yep. Stuff you never know. Yep. Well, we talk about that all the time that you have to be an advocate for your own health. Mm -hmm. They don't know what they don't know. So, 
So you have to come to the need. And you only get that, like you said, from trying things and collecting data and doing this stuff yourself. You know, that's the only way you're going to figure it out. Like they're not, they are not being proactive. You have to be. This has been a very, I, 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 the metaphor I gave Paul yesterday, which is my coach at Throat Physique, is I feel like I'm out in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. Every now and again, a lifeboat comes by and throws me a lifesaver to breathe. And then they go away and I'm still treading water mm. because... I had such good blood work stuff going and then I started running through the testosterone when I started a prep because mm. metabolism started ramping up mm. and my activity level started going up. My doctor, my endocrinologist, my OBGYN literally threw their hands up at me last year and said, I can't help you anymore. Mm. And you feel lost. Like these people who took an organ out of you are now yeah. like, I we can't help you. Yeah. You have to change your life or I can't help you. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? Do you stop what you love? Or do you go try to find more answers? Yeah. So I'm still trying to find all the right people to pull with the educational knowledge, but I do have a lot of people really excited to learn more about it that are willing to research more yeah, and help. And help. So more eyes makes you more successful. Yep. And I'm I'm happy to have that support too. That's awesome. Yeah. And literally we just had Angela in here. We were finally found the missing puzzle piece. Yeah, so I got that gives me goosebumps. Yeah. I've watched her over four years struggle with that condition and the coach she had and you, you you fight being a friend telling someone you need a different coach mm -hmm. yep but at the same time when you have a coach for so long there's like this like loyalty absolutely in this relationship bad for leaving yep but i always tell people if you go in and get your hair done and you hate your hair are you going to go back to the stylist no it's a paid service that's right that's why right. go back to a service you're paying for that you don't like it's your health yep. it's not even your hair it's your health that's right and she has such a delicate condition. Like I was always concerned for her. Coach doesn't have the level of education for your condition. And they start throwing stuff at you. It can screw up your entire baseline. Mm -hmm. She had a heart condition. That's right. That's a big deal. And that's why I was concerned yeah. about my health is yep. because I had worked so hard for two years to establish this hormonal baseline that if I come into such a sport that does use certain no, stranger to certain things, you can screw blood work up. And if you're under insurance guidelines or medical guidelines, what do you do when you go in and your doctor is like, what's wrong with your levels? Mm -hmm. Or they can under prescribe you your next medication and you don't want to do that. So you're yeah, very picky. Absolutely. 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 But it's an encouraging situation though, too, because it's like, okay, there's, there's answers. You just have to keep digging. You can't stop. Don't give up. I've yeah. cried a lot. Yeah. I've had multiple people go. Yeah. That's yeah. my new and favorite emoji on <laughs> it's messaging like, is it, and it, it's heart heartbreaking when, when they throw their hands up at yeah. you. Yeah. It really is. And I feel like I'm it, it the word you hear is unique. Like we all grow up wanting to be unique, right? Yeah. But not in this way. Not, yeah. so we were just talking I, with hard. Tatiana, we were talking about being different is good, you know. This is this is this is the where you don't want to be different. <laughs> no, I think bodybuilding is so fascinating. It's, the health things that you come across that people get to battle and conquer. Like, I feel like medical professionals should study us. hundred percent. We just got to find somebody that's passionate about it. That's what happens is you always find somebody that's passionate about a certain niche and then they just dive in and they dig in and they start finding, I'm sure there's somebody out there doing that right now. I literally roomed with someone who's like an endometriosis specialist. Okay. I had so much conversations with her. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. It was it was this weird another roommate that's probably gonna be the best friend for the rest right? of my life that yeah. was put together. Like that's for those of you that don't friends. know, that's how she and, and Angel met and now they're like best friends. She needed a roommate, she signed up for cuties, and I need a roommate to kind of split it and have fun. And I answered a Facebook message mm -hmm. like, Who needs a roommate? I was like, I do. Yep. And we're best friends. And ironically, she moved to She ended up moving. Yeah, she ended up moving right there. Yeah. Yep. It's, that's so funny. It is a small world. It's crazy how things like that come together. Mm -hmm. It really is. And now we've come back and she did the same national like the top five I'm she so did proud of her yeah yeah i've watched her grow from struggling to be a natural bikini athlete and being too big because she's been a cyclist and now she found her calling and now she found an amazing coach mm -hmm. that's right and i'm really happy for her yeah like when you can truly be happy for another woman that's 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 a big deal it is because women it's hard to get along with it's women. it it is you guys out there listening i'm sure you understand that so you got to find your people you got to find your tribe i'm like it took me four years i know right? <laughs> <laughs> i'm sitting here i'm like i'm like we gotta stop because i'm gonna start crying <laughs> 
I'm like, stop it. I'm being so intimidated by you and my eyebrow story how I found you. Ironically, all these stories are hysterical how we're connected to like. She found me from an eyebrow tutorial on Instagram. I had a friend. I'd like, I don't do makeup, you know, and I was struggling to like find something that made me look pretty because I was a mom and had a newborn as me. I was asking about her eyebrows and she was, I learned from this chick and she sends me a, a, a reel yeah. from your Instagram of you like measuring out your eyebrows and shaping them around your face. You like drew lines and yeah. where the symmetry point was. Yep. And then you like did it in and I was like, that's really cool. So, so you actually you did help me because I found where to start. Yeah. But I'm like not the best at drawing it in because I'm just like, I need it real yeah, quick. Yeah, time. But it, I found yep. a shape because of you. You know, so it's like, but I found it from an eyebrow. From, it's eyebrow. eyebrow it's real. so like, again, it's so random how you will, you just never know when you're going to run into somebody or hit up, hit somebody where that they're going to just going to be part of your life forever. You know what I mean? It's just crazy. It's so funny when you look back at stuff like that. And, I was like, oh, she does reels and, now, and like, now she humps me everywhere we go. <laughs> <laughs> what was it going to go there? There's a lot of viewers that probably don't know the context of that. Just go on my Instagram. You'll see it. <laughs> when you get comfortable with someone, you know, don't be around Kelby. Just be careful. Just if you're throwing out any pheromones. If just, you have just... boundaries, let me know. Because <laughs> I break them all. Yeah. You know, it's all good. Then, then you know somebody really is comfortable with you when they start doing stuff like that that then you you know if i let me do that you know, like they that i put y'all through the ringer <laughs> uh-huh uh-huh but it's all good fun it's all good fun we always have a good time with better. it yeah 100 we have a lot we have we have a blast we have a blast so let's just finish this out give anybody like some words of encouragement that they would like that you'd like to leave, leave them with mm -hmm. i like i i know i hear that a lot and that's cliche but it really is don't give up yeah. like if you could throw as many hurdles in front of me as possible to be successful in bodybuilding. And I know like Deborah is my inspiration, mm. but the fact that she sees my story and sees the hurdles that I went through, despite what she went through right. is so empowering that me has been seen by someone who's faced death. That's right. She, and yet again, like, this is how I cry. Mm -hmm. cry, yeah, I cry. Yep, you make me look here. More, she literally I, again. I don't know if you guys can see it, but she's got literal goosebumps right now. So yep. it's how much it means to me. But it, you know, you you have two kids in the building, and I came from a knee injury where all my sports was ripped away, all scholarships were ripped away from me. And then you get really close, and you start doing the nationals, and then the knee happens again. It's like you got ripped away again. Mm -hmm. And then the hysterectomy, and it's like, and there you go. Everything that's like you need to be successful like good knees and good hormones you can combat it there's a way you just yep. and sometimes you might run into a medical professional that'll tell you to quit what you're doing to get a second opinion because we're not normal mm -mm. they don't face us on a daily basis they're literally like what we do is made for 60 year old women who sit at a desk job mm -hmm. not or you know so it's just keep looking don't give up and collect data. Mm -hmm. So that way when people start asking you questions, you can always refer back to what did affect you. Mm -hmm. And I always think that from my failures, I can teach more people. 100%. If I gave up, who could I teach? Yep. And there, how many women are in the same situation as me? I'm sure there's plenty. And that's a, that's the whole thing. It's like you, you right now, you could be saying something that triggers something, something in somebody's brain that's watching this that could set them on the path to find their success, you know, and find whatever their p piece that's missing. Mm -hmm. Any, any little bits and pieces could, could help with that. The, the knee injury alone, when I went into, I went to my first appointment, he said it was going to be two surgeries a year apart. Mm -hmm. And when he told me they would be a year apart, I was like, that takes me out of bodybuilding for two years. Mm -hmm. I can overcome a knee injury. I've done it once mm -hmm. and went back to being a collegiate athlete. And actually I was a trapeze artist in college. People don't know that. I, was I didn't know that. I was an acrobat and a trapeze artist, stuck knee. Wow. And I held someone from a bar from my knees. So I know it was possible. Mm -hmm. You can overcome that stuff. And, but through that, the physical therapy, I used it as an educational piece. Mm -hmm. I started working with Hana. She started prescribing me workouts. I started taking those workouts. We would adjust them to fit my knee. I don't do conventional lifts like bodybuilders. Yeah. People will look at me like, look at all this muscle. You must lift a lot. I'm like, nope, 10 pounds. It's all about how you lift it and your That's mind right. muscle connection. 100%. Mm -hmm. I had to find that mind muscle connection to sustain this through the injuries. I was on crutches for over 
over 12 weeks last year. Wow. Yeah, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's a great place. Yeah. That's a great place to end it out. So I talk too much. No, it's okay. This is good. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, we're editing all of these together, so I'll just edit this piece out if I if I screw it up but whatever we're i don't even know i know i i was saying when, when we got jordan on for the first one i think she said we're on episode 44 i still haven't even looked i think we're episode 44 so if you haven't done it already like comment subscribe to all the fun things for episode 44 i'm here with kelly haynes 44 <laughs> I know, because I because I started with the, with the sponsored athlete. Kelly Franklin. Yeah, <laughs> whole other story. Um, and with that, we're going to sign for Behind the Bikini. We're out. Bye, guys. <laughs>